Welcome to the Crossover Talk Show, where we talk talking sports and life. I'm your host, Travis Garrison. Got a very special guest with me today, Mr. Joel McCray, 2016 NBA champion, all the way from Paris. What's going on, man? How you doing? What's going on, man? Everything good? Good this way? What's going on with you? Man, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. I'm glad that you can join, man. I know we're on that time difference. You're over in Paris, and, you know, you want to get your day started, man. So I definitely appreciate your time. Yeah. Uh. For sure, for sure, man. Uh, it's actually it's six six, six hours ahead. Of you. Oh man, so you good? Yeah, you are oh, you good then? You good? Yeah, you I'm good. solid. I'm solid. I, I've been up all day, dog. Oh man, so yeah, you already got your day started. I'm just getting my day started, man. That's what's up, though, man. How's how's Paris treating you? Man, it's a uh, fantastic I- I- experience, man. I can see like the Eiffel Tower from my my, my window. You know, it's like. 15 minutes, you know, away. So being able to just be out here and experience a, a different culture is cool. Absolutely, man. I know, man, you know, I, 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 I retired from basketball like 2017, man, traveled the world. So I, I mm. definitely know that experience, man, you know, traveling and seeing uh, the, diff- the different cultures, man, lifestyles, something that, you know, man, which is a blessing, you know, and when we look at it, you know, a lot of times sure. I didn't really – Serge the moments at times, man. But throughout my mm-hmm. career later on, I, I started to value and appreciate, you know, what I was in, you know, what basketball, what basketball mm-hmm. took. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so you from, from Georgia, right? From Hinesville, Georgia, man. Small town, two two high schools, one Walmart. It's about 30 minutes outside of, of uh, Savannah. Oh, man. You said, dang. So what's the, what's the population? How many people I got down there, man? <laughs> I don't know how many people, but like we get a lot of people in and out because the uh, the the Fort Stewart Army base is like uh, right there. Okay. So people come in and out, and uh, the the Army brings a lot of uh, uh people there. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. So so what what made you start that journey on that basketball road, man? I like like for me, man, I had the two older brothers that played, man. So I, I was the youngest, so I wanted to be like them. That was pretty much my journey. How, how did yours all start? Man, I was playing uh, baseball for the longest, oh, and uh, and I wanted to play rec basketball because all my friends were playing. And I ran across um, a coach; he was coaching the the local AAU team. We only had one at the time, right. and he told my parents, "Like, yo, he's a basketball player. He's, he's not a he's not a baseball player." Yeah. So I, I started playing with him seventh my seventh grade summer, right. and I I never played baseball again after that. Man, you you don't miss it. Was crazy, man. I made all star every year. I was I was good in baseball, but oh. what deterred what deterred me from that? You know, I was deep down south. Right, right. So myself and one other guy, we were the only two uh, black guys on the team. Wow. So one year we made all star. I made it three four years in a row, and that year I, I didn't play at all. They didn't play us. You know, you're required to play people a certain amount of innings right. and stuff. So I played the required amount, and I didn't play after that. So after that, I said, I'm, I'm never playing again. That's, I, I never played again. Yeah. That's crazy, man. My, my mom tried to get me to play uh, baseball when I was a kid, man. I ain't going to lie. I was like, man, I couldn't do it. Man. I ain't want the ball hit my hand. <laughs> nah, it was fun, man. I'm, I still shock people when I throw on the glove. I can still throw it and catch and, you know, do all that stuff. So it's cool. Man, that's what's up, man. It's, it's a. I was like, man, after my time, I was like, man, I see all these dudes making all this money in baseball. I said, I'm I know, right? I should have stayed oh. with it. <laughs> for sure. Uh, hey, so so your, your high school experience, man, I seen that, man, you got a, a heck of a resume, man. What was your high school experience like? Because, you know, being a high recruit, you know, being ranked high, man, I know what that experience is like. Um, I know everything that comes with it, you know, mm. um, for the recruiting aspect and just for people just trying to get at you and, you know, just trying to be connected to you because they didn't think where, they, where you're going. They, you know, they see the money in it. No, nah, I always, I always said from being from a small town like that, it was, uh, it was difficult for me just, you know, constantly getting on the phone and talking to different coaches and everybody telling you you're the best player to ever live. And you like, you know, I, it ain't like that. But then I had schools that were just popping up at my school. I look in, you know, how the high school's got that little glass, Right. window at the door right. then you see him looking in the door and you know calling my parents and i just was honestly people were surprised i didn't like that at all like the whole yeah. recruiting process I, I i didn't enjoy it i mean i was honored it's a blessing obviously for those right. schools to want you to come but just the process of people calling you and you know some schools will bash other schools and bash other coaches i just 
I just wasn't a fan of that. So I I, I committed early. Oh, yeah. How early did you commit? My junior year before the basketball season even it, it started. Dang. <laughs> I, I, I was done with it. I was done with it. I was done. Wow. How, how did your how did your parents handle that? Like for example, like like my parents, man, like my mom, like my brothers were recruited from college, but like I my experience was a little different. Like I was ranked high throughout the, my whole high school career, and just my mom wasn't used to the harassment and how people was trying to pursue her, so she wasn't used to that business side of everything. How did your parents handle it? See, for me, mine was a gift and a curse because I was the first athlete in my family. Wow. So when my AAU coach first told them he can go to college for free, my parents' response was, is he that good? They had no clue. Wow. So the, the, the gift in it was I didn't have to deal with the go home, parents tell you what you did wrong. Like They're learning the game right. as they were watching me play. Right. But at the same sense, when it came to trying to figure out where I was going to college, I had to kind of lean on my AAU coaches, my high school coaches. I had to talk to friends. Like, you're just trying to get information and in, trying to figure out what you could. So my parents, they did a great job of trying to learn as I as I went on. But prior to me playing, it was no basketball, like, going on in my in my, in my family. That's crazy, man. Yeah. You're the first of it all, man. You're the pioneer this yeah. thing. Yeah. That, I mean, coming from a small town, man, it's like – you know, you you the first one to do some stuff, so it was cool. But trying to carry that weight on you sometimes is is tough too. Yeah, I can only imagine, man. I can only imagine. So you said you committed before. So what was your how many schools? Like, what, what was your choices? Like, you had a lot of choices, or you just like, man, look, this is the school that's pursuing me the most. I'm going to Tennessee. I was. Uh, I wanted to go to Indy. I mean, it was Indiana. Uh, Indiana wound up being too too far. You know, my parents wouldn't have never been able to come see me. Right. Florida, I really like Florida. And what's so funny is I never told Harrison Barnes this story, but I, <laughs> I, I, I never forget. So I was there. I was in Florida on, on the visit. Uh, I think Kenny Boynton was there as well, but he was going to, he was already committed. He was going. Gotcha. So, you know, they were talking to me, Army heavy, all day, all day. Yeah. The next day, Harrison Barnes comes. Mm. And it was like, wow, we don't even know who Jordan is no more. Wow. So stuff like that, I remember that. And I was like, you know, I'm not, there's no way I'm coming here. And Harrison didn't go there anyway. So, right. I, I, and then I think Georgia, I wasn't a high recruit yet. And I overheard at a camp, I overheard a coach behind me was like, yo, who is this guy? And I heard him say it. Wow. So in my mind, I'm not going here. So right. y'all, I'm not going here. And then they will write letters later on and say, remember who saw you first. I'm right. like, yeah, but I heard what y'all said behind me. Right, right. So right. I didn't I didn't go there. So Tennessee was the first like family experience I had. And like everybody was treated nice and Coach Pro really bought that like family atmosphere there. So I went to a game and I was kind of sold on them after that. Right. And I and and go back to what you were saying, man, in regards to like my recruiting process. Like cause I like I said, I didn't know I didn't know the process like that. You know, so mm. I'm going off, you know, I have people in my in my corner and in my ear that's telling me what I should be looking for, how what school I should think about going to, why I should go to that school. Mm. So I'm going off what they telling me because I don't have no experience in this, you know what I mean? And mm. so, like you said, because my mom and dad, they wasn't like sports heavy like that. So you rely mm. on the your your mentors or whomever to kind of give you advice. But sometimes that advice ain't the best advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nah, for sure. For sure. I, I kind of leaned on Tennessee as they played how I like to play at the time. That's yeah. when it was JP Prince and Bobby, they throwing oops off the glass. Like they run, they, they press and it was full court fast. And back when I was younger, I was, I was really athletic and, and that was my game. Right. So seeing that was a part of me that was like, yo, I think I, I fit this. Right. And, and, and that's perfect, man. Cause <clears throat> a lot of times when you see kids, they, they recruit, they, they go to schools based on the coaches, which we know the coaches don't stay, yeah. you know. No, and, my, and, mine didn't stay for a year, so. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, 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 like you say, you, you went there like send on a playing style or, you know, you just got to go with what you feel. And that's why I try to take kids now, man. It's like, you know, don't go based off what somebody else, what you do, what your parents, what you do. You got to mm -hmm. go based off what you do because you got to experience that. You got to live there. You got to deal with the, yeah, coach, sure. the situation, the lifestyle, man. So, Man, definitely, man. So, like I said, you've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, 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 what was your experience like? You know, playing at Tennessee. You know, what was that like? I know a guy that played there, but you know, what, what was your experience like? 
Uh, my freshman year was tough because um, it was I was recruited to play my first year. Uh, Scotty Hobson was supposed to leave. I committed my junior year, which was his freshman year of college. Gotcha. He posted posted in the draft then. Right. He didn't. Cool. Now I'm a senior. He's a sophomore. He posted in the draft again. Didn't he go. didn't. So now I'm playing behind Scotty, Cam Tatum, Tobias is coming in with, with my class. Ronaldo Ward is there. So the, the, the two, three is, is packed. Right. So obviously me being a top 50 recruit, top 45 recruit, I'm like, I had a hard time dealing with that because I never n- didn't play before. Right, right. So it was just, and it was at the time, the, the, the guidance there wasn't really that great to like, talk to a kid like me like yo this this why you're not playing because they told me to register i was like no right 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 because i didn't know what i'm like me i'm not about to in my head i'm not practicing every day going hard and not playing no games like right, exactly. like y'all got y'all got a game messed up <laughs> i didn't have nobody to really break it down to me like yo this could be beneficial for you the x y and z so it was that that first year was tough and then uh when coach martin came the next year it got tougher he came on some straight major pain shit like if you two minutes late to class, you got to get up at five in the morning every day for the next three days. Like he came on some, like we were questioning like, yo, how much do I really love basketball? Like it was so hard when he got there. When I got older, I realized why, right? why he was doing it. And like right. me and him are great, great friends today. Right. But when he first got there, man, we, we hated him. Oh my God. We hated him. <laughs> hey, I try to tell kids, man. I try to tell these young guys, man, they think college is sweet. They think because how the coaches are recruiting them, like, oh man, he loved me. This and that, man. You get behind those. Once you commit and you sign and you get there and you're in practice, <laughs> you hey. Bro, it's like an ongoing joke. It's like, yo, four years of college took off three years of my career. <laughs> <laughs> like that, bro. I tell my, we were talking about with some of my overseas teammates. I'm like, dog, the college, like, this ain't nothing. Like, college is. You run a play wrong with Coach Martin. He had us practice with 15 pound weight vests on, like for like the first like three months. It was crazy. It was no out of bounds. The ball going to a wall. It's like two people are colliding to get that ball into that wall. It's like uh, he taught that like toughness, like the discipline, and like he got easy as we went on. But he had to break a lot of habits we had. Wow, man, y'all, man, look, man. These kids think they is all sweet and nah, good. It's it, it's sweeter than it is now. All these, I don't want to get into. It. I support kids getting money. I support it. But even like the tran, even the transfer rules now. If like it's, I, I coach at AU, I have an AU team now. Okay, and it's for, for me, it's ruining the game. Right, right. Like you got kids going to four schools in 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 in, in four years. Right. I, 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 and, I, and I see that, man. I don't I don't understand it. I try to help kids out on the aspect of life skills. I don't even deal with the on the court stuff because there's a lot, man. Like you said, NIL deals. People could, so you, if I'm not happy you here. You can't run it. from it. You can't run from it. And that's not life. If right. I don't like this, I'm oh, I'm, I'm running somewhere else. Oh, I don't like my job. I'm going to quit, go somewhere else. Like that's, that's not life. And I feel like that is teaching kids like a, a, a scapegoat. That's not that's not real life. Facts. And, and it will make it worse is. You got some of them dudes playing 20 minutes a game. What are you transferring for? <laughs> you a freshman playing 20 minutes a game. What you, what, what, why are you leaving? Hey, man, honestly, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't comprehend it, man. I don't even try to understand it because it's, it's a lot, like you said, because it's it's teaching these kids that I – mean, don't get me wrong. Some situations, I think a kid should have the right. Don't get me wrong. But then, like you said, you got some kids, it's like, oh, man, I'm happy here. Or he yelled at or he, he didn't treat me right. I'm, I'm out. And then, like you say, oh, I see, I know dudes that transfer three times. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, what more do you want? And what's crazy is when kids transfer, like, to to, to power. I don't want to keep going on it. But you go to Tennessee, then you go to damn near North Carolina, then you go to UCLA. Like, bro, it ain't the schools right? at this point. Right. <laughs> it ain't the schools. Right. So, not, And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, you know, how do NBA execs look at that? You know what I mean? Like, do, do they even, like, unless the kid is just, like, straight out, like, can go man this this shit different now man it's soft I, it's the competitiveness ain't there it's shit it is different man it's different so 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 what what are some of your good highlights from college you was like man this is a situation man oh, this is a game man we talk about all the time this don't man was- nah i mean once we got through that phase with coach martin he was trying to you know shape us into young men more than 
on on the court. It was like it was a family. Like I still have a, a group text. I'm 31. I have a group text with five of us from from my my, my team in college. Right. Like we did everything together. Like that's the part I miss most. Like obviously you win. We won big games. We lost big games. But it was just like that was a real deal family. Like you never realize how much you know. You spend every day with them dudes. Right. Study hall class. Right. Right. You eating with them. You know what I'm saying? Like you you back in the dorm with them afterwards. You see them dudes every single day. And like we really em- embrace what Coach Martin was trying to bring to us and, and show us. And Coach Martin, man, stand up guy. He still texts my mom every Mother's Day. Man, that's awesome. I ain't been, I ain't played with that man since 2014. You know what I'm saying? Right. So just to 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 build a, to build a bond like that, man, and do it at Tennessee, it was it was cool. It, it's kind of hard now because we have a school that we changed coaches a a, a dozen times. Right. Shout out to Rick Barnes there. I think he there for the long haul. Right. But I mean, but other than that, like, man, Tennessee was – it's home for me, yeah, for that's, sure. That's, that's awesome, man. Like you said, man, that that family, on which I still got guys. We in group text right now with some of my guys in college. I left in 2006. Yeah. So I know that's what I'm saying, college. man. Yeah. You go it's nothing like college. Right. It's nothing like it, man. It's nothing like it. So now you go through your college experience, and now you're getting ready for everything that you prepare for, that pro life. What was What mm-hmm. was that situation like in regards for you preparing for the draft and – you know, you getting ready for these workouts. What was that like for you? For 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 you. I mean, I uh, I would say I was I was definitely I was definitely prepared for it because I mean, at my my last two years in college was was great. First team my SEC both years. You know, what I'm saying I played really well. Uh, hindsight, when I got drafted, it, it sucked that I got drafted because yeah, that was the best day of my life, but a day that. I would have been better off probably if I didn't get drafted, which is is crazy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I get what you're saying. But it was just, um, I mean, hearing your name call, like I said, once again, it's a, it's a blessing. But I went to summer league and I did my job. I was first team all summer league, like 20, between 23, 24 game. And I got drafted by the Sixers. And that was at the time was one of the worst teams in the NBA. Right, right. And the, and the, game, and the game, the league is so cutthroat. They told my agent, he's not, he, we don't think he's ready to be in the NBA. So we're like, if you feel like that, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you, no, cut him and right. let him go somewhere else? They was like, no. So they sent me to Australia. So I, I went to, I went to Australia. I was first team over there at about 23, 20, 24 game. And I wind up never playing one game for them. Wow. And it, it was crazy because it was like, if y'all didn't see something in me, if you drafted me, you thought you had something that you didn't. Right. But a guy, a guy who makes first team all summer league, he's at least going to go to camp. They wouldn't right. even allow me to go. To, they won't even allow me to go to camp. So it was like you, like you, you, you wasted almost a year and a half of of, of what I had going on. And I was a, a senior, so you know I wasn't like I was. They wanted me to sign a four year non guaranteed deal. That was when they were doing that to the whole team. Mm. I'm like, I'm 23. I went to college for four years. Right. I ain't right. getting on my first deal till I'm 28. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Like 27. Yeah, right. I was I was like no nah, I don't want to I don't want to do that because right. you have to for the people who don't know you have to make the team every year and then your money isn't fully guaranteed until like January fifteenth so if they cut you any time before January fifteenth they owe you nothing so I'm like damn I don't want to do that for four years dog <laughs> right I felt I felt like what I display in summer league is enough to just I'm just not asking for you to give me a guaranteed deal just let me go to camp and let's see what I can do. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of, like you said, a lot of kids, man, they don't, they just see the NBA. So they're like, oh, man, I got mm-hmm. NBA. Like you said, yeah. but the business side of everything, like you said, it could be super cutthroat. You think you yeah, win? Cause, they, they, they because ha- cause had I not got drafted and did what I did in Summer League, that's when I could have picked which team I want to go to. Three teams talking to me. Okay, well, what what y'all got here? What y'all see from me here? I could have picked it myself. Right. But. And then it being one of the worst, the worst team in the NBA. That was the year they were like zero and like twenty five before their right. first win. So it was like, so you know, I mean, hindsight, but you hindsight. know, a lot of stuff. Yeah, does not that 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 league is this cutthroat for sure. Very cutthroat, man. But you you end up you end up playing in Phoenix in two thousand sixteen. What what was yes that like? What was that like? You finally got your opportunity, your chance, man. And then you in Phoenix. Man, it was so crazy. So the we had. Two days before that, we had a, a travel in the, in the G League. I was playing in, what was it called? The D League at the time. All right. We were supposed to get home at a decent hour. Snowstorms. 
D League travel, we wind up not getting back to Delaware until like five in the morning. Right. But we have an 11 a.m. game. So I'm coming out in the tunnel yawning, and uh, um, Damon Jones wanted to be my coach. He like he talking, he talking shit. You better get ready. I'm like, man, I ain't trying to be here today. I had 61 that game. Damn. So people like, you know, he might get caught up, but so I go out to eat. My agent called me like, yo, you out? I'm like, I'm out. Where I'm going? He's like, you going to Phoenix? I literally packed as much as I could, went to the train station. I met the team in in uh, New York. Keep in mind, and they had me playing the point. At that point, I could do it, but I had never played the point. My first NBA game, I'm out there playing the point. So that whole, like, 48 hours was just crazy. That's crazy, man. Yeah. That, but that's that's that, exper- that's that experience. Like, man, you like you said, man, you, you don't feel like playing. Like you said, that y'all buzz got in at five. You play at 11. But like like I said, yeah. man, these kids think it's sweet. But you nah, got to like sweet. that. You, and, and you, and you hop straight off the bus, and you got to perform. You put up 61. That's that mental yeah. mentality. That's that mental that you say, like, man, I, I, don't, I don't care if I don't feel like being here, but my job is my job. And I didn't even think it would be as big a deal as it was. I was on NBA TV with Shaq and Kenny. Like, my mentions, my phone was damn near not working. It was crazy. Like, I'm like, people going to see it. But, every, right. like, the almost, like, the whole world saw it, which was, it was, it was crazy. It paid out, man. It paid out. So, you, yeah. play, you, play, your first, you play your first game in Phoenix, man. You finally get that jersey on. You find it on the, on the NBA team, something that you worked so hard for. What was that like in, in – and, I, and then you're going to be going to move forward. But what was that experience like Like in regards to now you find it in the, the dream finally really came true? No, nah, it was a, it was literally a dream come true, man. And it's like I got lucky, man. I've literally and I ain't just saying this because it sounds cool. I've had great teammates. So I was playing with uh, uh, Marquise Morris was, was, was one of my bets when I got there. I was there with uh, with with D book, Brandon Knight. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was on the team when D book was like that emergence like you start seeing him like yo he gonna be nice like he gonna be a different type of dude so it was like just being able i seen a lot of stuff man and to be on that team with like that it was crazy granted the coach got fired the second day i was there which was nuts (laughs) but but you know so it was like it was an experience like for me my first nba experience and and i'm in phoenix man i'm right there in the hotel downtown phoenix you know, you, you you couldn't ask for anything anything more than that. Yeah, I, I know Phoenix, man. I was out there with the with the Mario so when, when that whole oh, and all that. So it's yeah, even out there, but it's a beautiful. You know, Wait, look, you you and you know that that hotel, the arena, and the hotels right across the street. Mm-hmm. I stayed in that hotel right across the street, so it, it was dope. It was dope. <laughs> so <laughs> so then then you do something that a lot of people don't haven't had the chance to do. How many NBA guys had a chance to do? Yeah. You win a champion, an NBA championship, bro. How was that experience? First of all, you go to Cleveland, but then you end up winning the chip in a situation, in, in the place, in the series where basically y'all was down. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's still one of those series that's been talked about to this day. But yeah. y'all was down, and y'all come back and win the whole thing. When did Bron come back to, to Cleveland? Man, I was – I scored NBA Finals points, which is which is dope. I always tell people like, like yo, listen, some of y'all favorite players, some of these Hall of Famers don't have Finals points. <laughs> but, <laughs> you feel me? Anyway, nah, man, just like being on that team, dog. Like, however people think of them guys, bro. I'll defend them guys. I defend Bron. I defend Kyrie to the death of me, dog. Like, they some loyal, super cool dudes, man. Like, we went out to dinner as a team. Every time we landed in the city. We all went out to eat. Every time, like we went, if we went out as a team to party. The whole team went. Right. Like it was like we like we were really close. Like when everybody had their own handshake with everybody, right. that was just like because that's what we were. We, we were close. Like we was every. It was cool. Like Bron's a big kid. Like we all had a. We all had fun. And being in the locker room down three one, I remember that game and it was just like Bron saying like I think I think it was Bron was like yo, the way he broke it down. We got to win one. We got to win one here. You know, we can win at home. Right. And game seven, any, anything can happen. So I'm in there like, that shit sound good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. In my, in my head, I'm like, it's not easy to say it's done. <laughs> right, so him, right. and, him and Kai come out there and both have 40. Right. Boom, we, we win that game. Home game, we, win, we beat him by 20. Right. Game seven is like, yo, this, like, we really can win. And it, it was just like, bro, it was like a it was like a movie. Like just 
seeing seeing all those players on that court and like the performances, like how how great they were, how great they were locked in. Like I don't think there won't ever be a final series like that again. Of course, now, like I said, it goes down in history, and you was a part of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. You no, know, so so I know you kind of talked about it a little bit, but for everybody else, how was it playing for Brian? You know, they you talking about six nine two sixty some that just seeing it up close in person, man, and seeing what he what he does to take care of his body and how he just prepares for games and his mindset. You know, of, it's a great man, one of the greatest players. He, he uh he one of them people that. Like he watches basketball all day, so he will watch the stuff that uh, maybe a player that they may think Bron has no idea who he is. Bron probably know you because he watches basketball that much. Right. He knows every play. I know it, it's a story about Bron telling one of the players on the Raptors what the the, the play was. Right. That's true. That's a true story. He's like, "Nah, you supposed to be right here. Like, you, then you, you got to run over here." Right. Like the, every play. He's, he's probably the smartest, not probably, he's the smartest basketball player I've ever been around in my life. Like with no, and I have no hesitation saying that. I put him up against anybody in regards to that, for right. sure. <clears throat> like like he like he made you want to know what you're doing because if you don't with that team, he was embarrassed. That was the only time in my career I ever felt embarrassed. Like cause everybody else was so like, T. Lou takes at one time and everybody doing it. I'm just like, I didn't like that. I didn't like that, 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 that feeling. I didn't, I didn't like that. Right, right. Nah, man, absolutely, man. Now, I mean, you, you had your M NBA experiences, man. Now you're over in Paris. What's the biggest difference in regards to the NBA NBA style and overseas style? Because I tell a lot of people all the time, I said, look, you think it's sweet, like it's easy to make it overseas, but at the end of the day, it's really get some guys that played in the league that can't make it overseas because the style is different and just the livelihood, everything is different. It's just a, it's different. But I've, I've I've been lucky. One, I'm in uh, I almost played overseas once, but I got hurt that season. I didn't play that year. But this is my first full season, and I would say I, I got lucky. I'm in, in Paris. It's some guys in some cities. Some guys that we play on the road. I'm like, I don't know how y'all live here. Right. But but the game style is different. Like some teams will rather lose than to see you get 35 points. Of course. That ain't that just ain't gonna happen. Right. So at the beginning of the season, I would get 13. And people are like, oh my God, you played phenomenal. I'm like, damn, did I? Like, right, right. right. Like I had 13. Like, right. like y'all know I can get I, I can get 40. And like right, right, right. Uh, over here getting 40 is like it's unusual. It's rare. And it's like that court, the court's so small, man. It's like you don't think it affects you like that, but it, it really does. Right. So it's like it, it's a challenge. So right. like it's a challenge, man. And I just being over here, you you gotta learn. Like you'll have a game, you'll have a game where you have six points. Right. And being in the NBA, you're not really used to that. Like yeah. I'm like, you know, I I don't score 30, 36, 37 in the league. Right, right, so right. I'm not used to having six points, but it's just the style of play. And like over here, you, you can get paid. This guy's getting two million for averaging eight and eight points a game. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's role players, man. Then like you said, mm -hmm. then you have to win. If you're losing. You can have thirty five and lose, then it's, it's a problem. But if you yeah, have like, ten yeah. win, <laughs> oh, you then you good. Everything's good. Yeah, I, I think I want to say my my biggest challenge this year was some of the the team how we would uh, prepare sometimes. Like, like it's just like my mental for a game. I I I, I want to know the players. I want to know the plays, and sometimes just like the the the, the mental here isn't always on that that level and i haven't played i guess they would say euro league is the highest you know league in europe but that was a challenge for me this year was some games we just not being ready to play on a a a, a, a mind uh point like i'm not you i wasn't used to that right. you know absolutely absolutely and then you said you got a, you got a family right your wife and kids right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how how was it being away from your family, man? See, that's not that's another thing people don't understand, man. You're away from your your kids, your family, and you in a whole different country by yourself, and you're away from that, man. What what was that like for you? And you know how did how did you had to you know you got to lock in when you're over there? You working? Uh, uh, they came over here a, a couple of times, but it's you know for me it was hard for me. You know my wife, we have a two year old, and we have a three month year old, four month year old, and I'm just like she want to come back. I'm like, yo, I can't have you traveling with three bags and two babies. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. you know, 
you know, it was tough because you definitely, you know, you, you miss a lot of the, the moments like that. But how I always try to explain to her, like, I got five years left. I can stick this out for five more years and we can do whatever we want for, for the rest of our life, you know? So you got you to gotta find find the the beauty in it. Because if you don't, if you're just looking at pictures and videos of your kids, you'll, you'll drive yourself crazy, man. Absolutely. I see, you see some people overseas, they, 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 they don't make it. They don't. They don't, man. It's hard. I've seen, like I said, I've been in the, the best of places, the worst of places, man, and and, and it ain't cut up for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was in, I was in China in the, in, in the bubble last year. I, I had to do fourteen days straight in in, in, a, in a hotel room. Couldn't couldn't walk out, step foot out the room. It was a, and it ain't no Four Seasons. It was a bed, a little chair. That was it. Fourteen days straight. I ate so many noodles. I had to get my look. My I had too much sodium in my kidneys. I had to. Bro, it was just like, so it was yeah, times good. like that where yeah, it was tough, but like you literally, you you doing it for, so my kids don't have to struggle. So you you got to find ways to look at the the bright side of it for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like that's that's the side people don't see. They don't see that side, but I, I definitely want to get some more from you, man. So I know you're doing some great stuff in the community. We'll come back. We'll take a quick commercial break. Be back in a few. Got my man Jordan McCray here, NBA champion. Make sure you stay tuned. Got a great book idea, but don't know where to start? Lack time and patience to get your manuscript written? Experiencing writer's block? Well, let CQ Wilder help you out. She's a ghostwriter, English professor, and editor offering her services to help you write the book or books of your dreams. Don't waste any more time and go visit www.cqwilder.com for more information. Your new book is just around the corner. Welcome back to the Crossover Talk Show with your host, Travis Garrison. We'll be talking sports and life. Got the NBA champ, professional basketball player, Jordan McCray. Hey, we was talking about the basketball side of things, man, but you're doing even bigger things off the court. Um, you haven't been involved in the community. Like you said, you got an AAU program as well. What, what, what was your inspiration and motivation behind basically giving back in a sense? You have a lot of guys that make it and they just don't go back to their neighborhoods or the community or they don't want to some people don't care about it, honestly, but what, what, what was your motivation behind it? Uh, for a long time, I was the only, like, NBA player. You know, then uh, Davion came around. We have two NFL players. But for a long time, I was the only one who had got to that to that point. And we, we're, we're from a small town. And when I play AAU, I play with my local team, and I didn't get any looks. I got like UGA because we only played in Georgia and I maybe Georgia Tech, but that was it. But when I started playing with the Atlanta Celtics, that's when my recruitment went crazy. I'm ranked now in the country. And I'm number two player in Georgia. So my vision was I don't think I was always the best. I right. think I got an opportunity that everybody doesn't get. So with doing this AU team, I was like, I wanted to give the opportunity to everybody now. Right. Like, because everybody's not going to get a chance to play for the Atlanta Celtics, the Georgia Stars. Right. If, if I can create something in my own backyard where every kid is getting seen in front of all these, these college coaches, there won't be only two NBA players and three NFL players. Right. Our city, it could be 10. You know what I'm saying? It could be 11. Right. So I wanted to create an environment, and I have a, a, a team of friends with, with me that just we can just give people real opportunities to go to, go, to, go to these amazing schools and to go and, you know, and do all this. Because we don't have – we have too much talent to only have a handful of division one athletes and then even smaller people who, who went all the way to be a pro. Absolutely, man. I think, I think that's huge, man. Coming from somebody like you that's been there, done that, played on the highest of levels, then mm -hmm. come back and basically provide opportunities for these kids to get something that you think is, is, is major. And it is major, man. Like you said, man, you provide mm -hmm. opportunities for kids that may not have gotten it, but because even with your access and who you are, it, it makes things a lot easier to happen and brings a lot more exposure. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I, I, I was never comfortable with trying to use, hey, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Jordan McCray. I, but for my kids now, I know these college coaches. I have no problem trying to pick up the phone to call a coach. Hey, coach, it's me. I have a, I have a, a AU team now, and I can use my name to help them. Absolutely. Because you know how it is. The, a, a damn video coordinator is now a, a, a head coach somewhere. So, so it's so it's handful of people that I know that I can now use to help them. So, right. 
Absolutely, man. I, and I know you do the uh, the spade tournament. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna hold you. I don't even know how to play spades. People try to give me to play spades. Don't take my card, man. Don't take my card. Hey, <laughs> hey, dog. When I say spades is a way of life where I'm from, <laughs> we, we, we had a we have a gym. We didn't get a movie theater. You're gonna laugh. We didn't get a movie theater until I was about like ninth or tenth grade. Wow. So we had a gym, and in between, we'd go, we'd be at the gym all day, but in between games, we would play cards. Right, right, right. And you know them playing cards may get heated. It, right, right. People yelling. And right, when right. I got older, we sit at somebody's house. We order some seafood. We have right. some drinks. Right, right. Cards, playing cards over here. They're eating over here. is music over there. Like playing cards is like as a way of life. So I wanted to do a tournament, a, a, a weekend for us to like organize it. People throw on some nice clothes. People have some fun. Like we have some music. I have like hors d'oeuvres passed around. I have a couple of alcohol sponsors. Get everybody drinks. And we really just, we have a great time. Because like I said, my, my city hasn't experienced that yet. Right. But for me, I've been around. I've seen, I've had this, I had that. So I want to bring that experience back to where I'm from. No, absolutely, man. I know you do a basketball camp, man. What's the name of that camp? And when does it start? Like when, when is this, what's the schedule? Uh, this year is uh, June 24th. Uh, it's just, I'm, I do a whole uh, a, a weekend. And the camp is just free, man. Just any anybody who want to come, I have uh, I have guys in there. I had a bunch of pros in there last year. You know, my one of my teammates, Ryan Brown, he went to the University of Miami. He plays professional overseas. So we have some other guys. I'm going to bring my trainer down there this year. My trainer, uh, Anthony Edwards, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram. The, his list is is right. crazy. Right. So I'm gonna actually have I'm gonna have him come down there and put him through drills. And oh, you man. know, you just want to I just want to give back to. I want all the things that. We would see other kids getting. I want to give that to to to, to us. Man, that's awesome, man. Because like, I I know a lot of guys, man, that they do camps, but they're going to charge. You know what I mean? They might charge nah. camp too, but like for how you doing it, man? I think it's I think it's huge, man, and and admirable, man. Because like you said, I mean, you're you you're a role model. You're a pioneer in that in that community, yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's like a lot of guys need to go back to their communities. You know, to do mm-hmm. back because they. You got these kids that's looking up and watching TV, and they're like, "Yo, he's from here," but they never, I, they never you see. You never him. see him. They never, never see him. him. Yeah. So it's like he's not, it's not real. But when you go back to your community, you do those things. Now it's real, and I tell guys all the time. I said, "Man, honestly, we respond. We got a responsibility. Like that's our duty. Mm-hmm. We got to go back and help." Yeah. Kids. Like it's it be it's like, come on, we made it out. We 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 achieved this. Like why can't we go back and 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 show them that they could do it too? Yeah, it's uh like I said, I for me to be the first one to get drafted and then to watch Davion Mitchell this year go go number nine. We same high school, same I know his whole family, he know mine. But that's how that's how we gotta wanna want for each other. Right. I'm glad I gotta do it first. And I'm glad he did it way better than me. Right. And then I hope somebody can do it way better than him. Right. So if we just keep that going, like you said, always being around gives the next kid hope to be able to see and touch you and be able to really know that you're there and you is real it can happen you know what i'm saying so that's that, that's dope man that's that's that man I, it is dope bro and i know you got a, a clothing line out there too man tell about your clothing line man man i don't really i mean it's just it's just everything i do you see i got on my my, my team hoodie south georgia lead hoodie <laughs> everything that i that i get uh I, we partner with uh with, with, with fan art everything that people buy these hoodies they everything goes right back to my my au team wow so I mean I don't for me God's blessed me to be in a nice position financially. So even my whole weekend we have a space event, we have a basketball game, then we have a, a after party after that. Everything, all the money goes right, right back to my AU team. Man, that's what's up. Yeah, that's I'm trying to you know I really want to pour into them, man. Hey, we 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 got we got to get down there for that, man. I gotta go to. Hey man, listen, if you want to be in the dirty south, man, you want to eat some crab legs. <laughs> You know, saying some space, man. You got to come down there, dog. It's nah, gonna be a, a nah, great I'm, time. I'm definitely going to do that, man. But before I let you go, what would you tell uh, a, a student athlete, man, or a kid that that's early on in their journey, man? Like, what what advice would you give with a high school, college, or even preparing for the pros? What advice would uh, NBA champion give give one of these kids, man? Man, play. And when I say that, it's cool to have a trainer. It's cool to you know what I'm saying? Go, go through your drills. But if you really want this, you got to want to, like, play. Go find an open gym. Go play. Like, hone hone your skills by playing. I feel like a lot of guys now, 
everybody has a, a personal trainer. Like, bro, you 12 with a trainer, dog. Like, go play basketball. Like, go go watch watch Steph Curry and try to do what he do because because that, that's what you did. That's what I did. Exactly. I seen it on TV. I went and I, I tried to do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying not have a trainer. Right. But, man, just I feel like playing basketball, just being out there is one of the most important things, and that's one of the things now that, you know, we kind of losing sight of. Don't want to get off topic, but AU, we kind of rest guys. Man, we, we, we played seven games in one day, dog. Like, easy, easy, <laughs> easy. Especially if, look, if, if you lost that first one Friday night to get back in the winners back on Saturday, then you had to win eight games straight. Like, come on, dog. Exactly. Like, man, but if you really want it, man, my advice is just, man, play, man, and and take advice from your older guys who, 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 who's been there. When I, when I go talk to kids, especially high school, I love talking to high school kids, I always try to give them the floor to ask questions, and everybody's always too cool. Right, absolutely. Like, bro, at, like you can ask your questions, man. Ask questions and who. I, I I tell kids all the time, and look here, man. I've been there, done that. You better bang. I ask, ask me a thousand questions. We want to give you the information. Ask them. Yeah. Ask them. I ain't got no problem telling people my 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 greats and my falls, man. It's all it's all to help you guys. I got five years left, man. Absolutely, man. Hey, how can people find out more information about your events, your camps, anything that they want to find uh, out about Mister McCray? Man, Instagram, Facebook, man, Twitter, man. I'm on all that, man. Just and I'm, 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 I'm active, man. If you somebody writes something to me, I'm gonna say something back. If you write something, something stupid, I'm gonna say something back stupid. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it is what it is. Hey, man. I just like I said, man. I definitely appreciate you taking time out, man. Not just that, but what you're doing for the community and for these kids, man. It's demirable, man. That's inspiring, man. Continue to inspire, man. Continue to chase them dreams. Um, dream big, think big, what you're doing, man. So I definitely appreciate you uh, joining the crossover talk show. Yeah. Your host Travis Garrison got Mr. Joel McCray that joined us, man. I, I definitely appreciate everything that you're doing, everything that, you, you, man. Everything that you're going to do. Thank you, man, dog, my dog, A- anytime. Absolutely, man. So you guys stay tuned to the crossover talk show. Got more great guests to come. Stay tuned.